that thrive on it. Welcome to the hidden world of the grime fighters. Leicester house cleaner Suicide Sid shows a bit of talent, but not much. Is that what she calls cleaning? How's about that then? And in, in Leicester, council property manager Steve is dealing with the clean-up problems after negligent tenants have left. He has to work out how to refurbish the property and get it back onto the rental market. We've got this uh, top floor tower block flat today. Um, I think the previous tenant's been evicted, so we're just going to have a look inside and see what we can find. He's only just gone through the door when he's hit by the smell from the bathroom. Quite disgusted in there, to be honest. There's a lot of... Uh, Dog mess on the floor in the bathroom, so it looks like she's had uh, animals not allowed in towel blocks. So that's probably one of the reasons why she's no longer here. Now on to the living area. This is um, obviously somebody's living room. But from the state of the sofa and the chairs, I don't know how they've ever been comfortable in here. Um, bikes everywhere, they've always been doing bike repairs, mobile phones. It's, it's not my idea of a living room. Just a collection of rubbish, really, that you find at a tip. You do wonder how somebody's lived in, in this property. Well, this is how people live, unfortunately. Steve has to see flats like this every day, and it does have an effect on his home life. The way I go on to a, a girlfriend, I'm always moaning at her about cleaning. It's probably because I see things like this that um, I get a bit um, obsessive-compulsive at home, and, and as soon as a bit of dirt or crumb around, I'll be hoovering up around her when she's eating her lunch or stuff. Refurbishing this flat poses serious problems. Not least, the fact that it's on the 17th floor. We might have a problem with that window. We're going to have to try and get that emulsion off. It costs a, a lot of money to get scaffolding up here to uh, replace that, so it depends if it's gloss or emulsion, whether it will come off or not. That's going to be a nightmare job for somebody cleaning that. The final room he looks at is the kitchen. Graffiti again on the, on the units. We've got some more graffiti on the door there. They obviously didn't have a piece of paper to write it on, so... Uh, the nearest thing to hand was the door. This will need a new kitchen. The units, by the looks of it, they're, uh, they're beyond repair, so we'll, take, we'll change all the units. New, new sink, new worktops. Steve has to get this flat cleared quickly so he can start the refurbishment as soon as possible. Prospective tenants are already queuing up, so once again he's going to call on the services of Suicide Sid and his A-team. <laughs> Sid acquired his nickname because of the zealous way in which he clears properties. Suicide and the boys can empty a three-bedroom house in around 30 minutes. So this place should be a bit of a doddle. In Leicester, council property manager Steve has called on Suicide Sid and his A-team to pull out all the stops. Suicide and the boys can empty the contents of a family house in 30 minutes. But this one-bed flat is on the 17th floor, and everything has to come down via the lifts. The limited space is on the lift. You know what I mean? I mean, you can't bring anything downstairs because it's fire hazard. And with Dave coming inside the lift, you can't get so much in it, can you? They've used these ones before, and that doesn't inspire confidence. I hope the lift do not get stuck. It does break down very often. This one does, doesn't it? But this time, hey-ho, the lift is working, and they can make a quick start. First, they remove the council's protective door. The bins have got to come in and out, and also the chairs and the sofas have also got to come out this way, so we can't get them out with this one, so it's got to come off. Once the door is off, the problems are exposed. Sadly, they've seen this all too often. I would say this is about the average That's for a an bad average, flat. yeah, for a bad flat. After years in the job, Sid is still baffled as to why people do this. I don't understand how people can live like this, really. Apparently, she was an alcoholic. I mean, looked at you'd think it was a boys' flat, wouldn't you? With all the push bikes on that, but you wouldn't believe it. it's a woman lived here. Maybe she had a fetish for bikes. I don't know. Makes you wonder where she sat and slept. There's no bed in here or anything. As oh, always, it's the big stuff first. So the boys grab the sofa, <laughs> or what's left of it. What do you add to this then? She got some use out of this, didn't you? But there again, it's alcoholics, isn't it? They don't spend money on furniture or anything. They just drink all the time, isn't it? You know what I mean? So they'll just put their head down anywhere, wouldn't they, really? Usually the fridge in these properties is horrible, but amazingly, Sid doesn't have to hold his breath. It's not bad, actually. With the big items cleared, the boys are making good progress. And there's time for a spot of reminiscence. You just don't know what you're going to come up against. You know what I mean? There's some places you could come to an house or a flat 
and it's immaculate. When I say immaculate, you could walk in there and actually live in the places, you know what I mean? But then some places like you get like this. I mean, we went to a, a flat the other week. The bloke had put all brand new carpets down and never moved in. And we've just gone in there, took all the carpets away and just crushed them all. <laughs> Pointless, isn't it? This house we've done. And we found these photos of a woman in bondage. And uh, a couple of weeks later, Dave went to the co-op and actually bumped into the woman, didn't you? Yeah, in the queue. <laughs> I can't say too much because my wife will with me. <laughs> but so, I did say I recognise you. Yeah. With no clothes on. Things seem to have been going rather well. But then there's the bathroom. As you can see, as you walk in, it looks like the dog's been living here. Been there a few days, actually, because it's dry, lot. It's quite rock hard. Doesn't look like she used the bath or anything, does it? It looks like the dog's been using it. Caution, wet floors, cleaning in progress. Is that what she calls cleaning? <laughs> How's about that, then? <laughs> Thanks to the boys' hard work, the flat's looking a whole lot better. But will property manager Steve agree? In Leicester, Suicide Sid and his A-team have made short shrift of clearing the 17th floor flat. But they've still got to put back the protective door to stop any intruders. Uh, we're just basically now we're just locking up and just sweeping up on the way out to the lift. Just take the last of the bins down there and just lock up. Sid is resigned to the fact he'll be back here again. We do go to an hour, we could twice, three times a year sometime. Why you want to move in for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, then like you move back out again. Plus you're leaving all your furniture what you brought in. I mean there's people out there who ain't got nothing, absolutely nothing. And yet these people can just walk in and out, fill it without all their furniture, oh. and just walk out in a couple of months and leave it all. Then send someone else in and do the same again. We'll be back again. But Sid's always got Dave to keep his spirits up. You know what they say about fat guys, don't you? They may have small ones, but look at the weight pushing the toes. This is tough work for tough men. But there are problems. No, I've done one of my nails. Since we filled, the flat will soon be back on the rental register. In Leicester, the property on the 17th floor was soon relet. 